We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we did not plan to talk about any of the things that we're talking about in this episode in today's episode uh but then lewis hamilton decided to wake up and put on some red overalls instead of black and he chose here violence we are. catherine he chose violence <laughs> he indeed chose chose violence and um i would just like to point out and we've already posted this on our socials at going uh, dot off dot track um, but remember back in august when we talked about how hilarious it would be that lewis would join ferrari but it would never happen i think i'm the one that said that i'm like he'd never leave mercedes to go to ferrari why would he ever do that yeah money, i said Emily, it would be funny money. <laughs> Yes, and we will talk about the money factor. Now, before we dive into this, um, this morning news came out that Christian Horner, Red Bull team principal, is under investigation um, for inappropriate behavior in the workplace, which can mean a whole realm of things. Um, we'll, once there's more news about it, if there's more news about it, we'll talk about it. Um, there's a third-party organization investigating. Red Bull as an organization is taking this very seriously. But as we have learned from the Susie and Toto Wolf incident from a few months ago, um, it's media literacy has never been more important and never been um, more underutilized by most people. So just because you see something linked somewhere does not mean that that's actually appropriately sourced. Um, so... Be critical of the media that you see, um, and obviously, it this this is not a great thing to, to have to be dealing with. Um, you know, just uh, you know, from a sport perspective, um, and you know, for for being a you know a fan of a sport, you know, this is the last thing that we want to deal with and talk about. Um, but it is something that you know we are glad to see that's being taken, you know, handled appropriately. Yeah, all we know as of right now, officially, is that. There is an investigation. It is, and that's that's the only piece we know to be true at this point yeah. in time. So yeah, everything everything else is is speculation. Is probably a lot of people who don't like Red Bull saying things that you know if this was happening at Mercedes and the people who didn't like Mercedes would say the same things too. Yep. Um, but anyway, yep, yep. we were supposed to talk about our top moments from the 2023 season to prepare for Drive to Survive. Um, but as Emily said, Lewis Hamilton shows violence. And so we have another big thing to talk about instead, because in 2025, Lewis Hamilton is moving to Ferrari. He, just to take a step back, he ruined my entire Thursday. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many people were like, because my friends obviously know I love Ferrari and my friends were pinging me. They were texting me, DMing me. And they're like, is this true? What do you think? And I was just sitting there like, there's not been an official announcement. We don't know anything. Nothing is true. And then it came out and oh God, it, it literally ruined my day because I couldn't think of anything else except what is going on at Ferrari. Again, like yeah. I said, Lewis is never going to move to Ferrari, and here he is moving to Ferrari. Yeah, from a media PR <sighs> standpoint, I think that they took too long to to get around to it, and obviously they had to tell personnel, they had to, you know, there there were all those stories that I woke up to of the you know the the team at Mercedes gathering um, in Brackley, and you know they have to they have to tell Mercedes that Lewis is leaving. Toto is obviously not there, but I still think that there was a very long series of hours after, you know, relevant personnel had clearly been told that we were still just waiting on news and, you know, in, you know, in the United States or my side of the United States, it was, you know, relatively, you know, relatively decent time during the day, but that was after speculation that had been going on for hours and Emily wakes up many hours before I do by virtue of the fact that you're four hours ahead of me. Five. No, I am. Five. Am I no, four? it's four. It's four. Oh, God. Time zones. So difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was wild. It was a wild day. And I agree. They waited way too long. And then it's like, oh, coming soon. And there will be an announcement. And just following all of social media for every who remotely touches Lewis or Mercedes or Ferrari it was just so, oh, so much going on in my brain it was so scrambled 
but alas i will say i do love a, a good media circus type of day um but yeah it was it, it was a lot like I'm sitting watching the Sky Sports they put up on the their YouTube channel, this whole hour long retrospective of, you know, Lewis and the move and what that means and people talking, you know, everywhere. Um, but like even the official announcement didn't come on that thing and that it was happening at like, you know, dinner time in the UK where it was where it was based. So I'm just like, you got to got to get out there. Was- I will say that the other go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it was super late in the UK mm-hmm. when they announced, because I think it was like three or four o'clock my time, and I'm five hours behind Yeah, uh, the UK, I think. So it was way later in the day than I thought it would be. Yeah. I also think that, like, it was very clear that no one, certainly not Mercedes, saw that coming, because A, they've said so, but B, the day before, Mercedes admin posted on social media a pixelated picture of Lewis in the Mercedes car, and that picture has just been memed to death ever oh, since. Oh, it's so As it entertaining. Should. I'm obsessed. Had once, yeah. like, sat in the car once and signed a contract at Ferrari, Bye. like, love love oh but yeah so you know silly season came a little early for us this year and it's dinner time it's dinner time for the cat <laughs> check the box um that, that just means that we're podcasting too late in the day for emily no but um oh no i've lost my train of thought oh silly yeah, season it, came early it came early and i early. was not mentally prepared for this <laughs> or emotionally no. prepared I thought last week when we recorded and we were talking about Charlotte Claire's contract, I was like, yay, we get to talk about a contract. I missed this. And it's a little taste before, you know, August. But here we are, top of the podcast. And now, and now we're going to spend about a another good one. 40 minutes talking about a contract. I And, and this, is a, this is a big contract. And, and money is, is clearly one of the the many reasons why Lewis made the move because allegedly he's going to be making a hundred million dollars per year for the duration of this two-year contract which has an option for 2027 wild yeah this is the thing I don't get though bananas amount of money it's a bananas but he's been driving an f1 forever he has insane sponsorships that he does Every single year, I swear when I'm in an airport, all I do is like see Lewis Hamilton things, but Mercedes and him had such a relationship and he wanted to get another championship. You really think you're going to get it at Ferrari? Like you don't need a hundred million. I mean, I get it. But at the same time, it's just like, I don't. Well, I think they're going to start on fire. There, and your there's strategists definitely some are delusion make involved. Calls. Oh God, I don't. There's like definitely it. some delusion involved. One of the the problems, and this is one of the practical reasons why Lewis left Mercedes, is Lewis was would have been happy to stay at Mercedes forever until he retired, until beyond after he retired. Um, but I have seen reports that said that you know Lewis wanted to sign a contract that he would be a Mercedes ambassador through 2035, which would be what 11 years 11 years um but the rumor was mercedes the board so like above toto um they were only willing to give him like one year plus one contracts whereas ferrari was clearly willing to throw down hundreds of millions of dollars including you know a what nine figure investment in um, Lewis's, you know, diversity and inclusion efforts and things like mission 44, which Lewis is incredibly passionate about. And so Ferrari is willing to pony up in a very interesting way that Mercedes is not. Yeah. I think honestly, as soon as they got Lewis's ear about this seat, it was just, what do you want? We'll throw money at it. We'll do anything you want. We'll give you anything you want. Come to Ferrari. And I don't think he was yeah. getting that same love for Mercedes. And I and I understand, like, if you've been with this team for so long, so many years, done so many good things for the team, won championships, et cetera, et cetera. So many championships. I think that you would get a little bit more love than a one-in-one contract. I totally get yeah. that. I uh, just makes my skin crawl because this means that you know 
Carlos He's your driver now. And my new driver is Lewis Hamilton, which now, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm really intrigued to know what's going to happen this season, like, with this move. I just, it's, I feel like announcing so early is just, like, bad juju for the season, you know? Well, I mean, it also is, is a show of bad, you know, not exactly great faith in what Mercedes is going to be providing you know, Lewis and George this season. And now obviously I have said, and will continue to say until the cows come home that 2021 broke Lewis's spirit as a driver, but also Mercedes did not provide him with, you know, a remotely competitive car and continued insisting on, you know, taking the same track until the beginning of the 2023 season. Um, they have James Allison back. He's, I believe he's like the technical director again. Um, and he's already identified, you know, certain things that need to be fixed in order to make Mercedes more competitive with, you know, the Ferraris and the Red Bulls and the McLarens of it all. But, you know, we talked about you know, we joked about Lewis not leaving Ferrari back in August. So this has obviously been in the mix for a very long time. And it it really speaks to the fact that Mercedes is probably not going to be competitive this year. Or next year. Or next year. Yeah. But uh, like, I'm, I'm very happy for Lewis. Like he's towards the end of his career and he can still pull a million dollar two year contract or a hundred million dollar two year contract. Great for him. Very happy for him. I just hope that he goes out on a high note because he's done so much for this sport. And as much as we don't love Lewis, he's done a lot in F1. He's done a lot for F1. And I just like, I don't want to see him go to Ferrari and have his car start on fire two years in a row. And that's how he goes out. You know what I mean? Like, no, he wasn't winning with Mercedes, but they were throwing everything in it to make him to try and get him a competitive car and everything was for Lewis. We love Lewis. We want him to win another championship here. And I truly believe like Toto and everyone at Mercedes was trying their best to get that championship for Lewis. And then he could retire. Obviously the money swayed him to Ferrari. I just don't know what's going on at Ferrari and will he be able to win because you also have the Charles Leclerc of it all who's like, Mm -hmm. you know, golden child of Ferrari. And we see Ferrari clearly favor him over Carlos. So what's going to happen when Lewis gets there? Are they going to have, you know, two number one drivers or two drivers where we don't assign a number two? Or what's going to happen? Like, I also don't want to see Lewis going to Ferrari and then having to sit back and be play second fiddle to Charles Leclerc. Because, I mean, Charles is fine, but like, he's not my favorite. Or are you going to have two drivers that are really, really good and, like, battling always for first place? I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're, they're clearly going to favor one driver over the other. Obviously, yeah. we have a whole other season to get through before this happens. But I don't know. I feel like, you know, Ferrari's just putting the cart in front of the horse a little bit on everything with this. Well, the the biggest thing to to also remember, and obviously my experience of Formula One is the 21, 22, 23 season plus 2016. But if you look at Ferrari historically, they have taken champions and those champions have not had positive results. Sebastian yeah. Vettel came in after his years of success at Red Bull and did not have a great time. Um, it Same thing happened with Fernando Alonso after he won his titles and look at where Fernando is now, or well, at least Fernando had a little bit of a dip and now he's living the dream at Aston Martin. And we'll talk about his potential future in a little bit, but you know, obviously Ferrari is such an iconic brand, iconic, you know, everybody, you know, little boys growing up, you know, wanting to wear the the bright red race suit. um, And everybody just really just wants to be traumatized by Ferrari strategy and hope that they're going to be the thing that's different. And the question is, is Lewis moving to Ferrari going to be the thing that's different than what we have seen historically? It could be. It, it very well could be. I mean, this could be the best thing for Lewis and for Ferrari. I yeah. know that he spends, like, you hear about him spending so much time with Mercedes to really go through and develop things and, you know, work with the car and the engineers. And, and maybe he'll do the same thing at Ferrari. And he has more weight than, you know, maybe a Carlos to say, like, this isn't working. Change it now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I think it'll be super interesting Super interesting to see 
but I'm just worried about yeah. Carlos. I'm just really yeah, worried but it, about Carlos. <laughs> if we're thinking about, and we're definitely going to talk about Carlos, um, but if we're thinking about the question, can Lewis actually win a championship at Ferrari right now? My answer is no. Yeah, if they keep the strategy thing up, I'm going to say no. But... I, I mean, who knows who they who Lewis will bring with him, or who knows what's going to happen. You know, staffing can change year over year. I'm sure they have a plan. They've thought this through. Staffing should change. Which we we've talked about. Fred Vasseur needs to take like an axe to his his you know strategy team. Yeah. Um. And and speaking of of personnel who would move with Lewis, the question is is Bono his you know race engineer who has been his his partner forever at Mercedes. Um. He there there is you know potential that he will follow Lewis to Ferrari, which would bring you know a, another level of you know, somebody who actually knows what he's doing, who's not the driver making his own strategy like Carlos had to last season. Honestly, I think you could pick anybody up off the street and they would do better at strategy than what Ferrari's got going on. Like they need an That's overhaul. Totally fair. They need an yeah. overhaul. It's And I'm, I'm concerned oh, about the painful. fact that we haven't heard anything about that in the off season and you know we you know if 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 Visser was going to make those changes we would have heard about it at this point yes and yes and no hear me out here so if this whole thing with Lewis has been in the works for a while I don't think they would overhaul their strategy team and then just to have to do it again when Lewis comes in like if they That's had fair. this plan all along and they knew you know Maybe they've already talked about Bono coming over and who Lewis would want to work with and things like that. I can see them just riding out this last year and saying, you know, to hell with it all. We'll figure it out later. And then doing an overhaul in the off season before the 2025 season. That's fair. And and Ferrari is not exactly, in, in my opinion, self-aware that their issues come from their strategy. So I, I can, I can agree with you that they, that they would, you know, be comfortable with waiting in a way that I don't think other teams would be. Yeah, no, for sure. They uh, they seem to be blinded by what's go what was going on last season, so that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, but they still have one more season with senior engineer Carlos Sainz, um, <laughs> who senior you know, engineer. Give him a little bit more credit. I'd say head engineer, lead engineer, head engineer, <laughs> number Carlos one engineer. Lead driver, lead engineer, only race winner in the last season. Um, and like, uh, yeah, Carlos totally got screwed. But also, what's Ferrari going to say to Lewis? No, don't come here because we want to keep Carlos signs. Yeah. And the thing is, too, with Carlos, it's like, oh, we're negotiating contracts with both drivers. And then all of a sudden, mm, Charles Leclerc has a issues. contract and things are stalled with Carlos. Like, a I'm guessing what happened was Lewis all of a sudden came back and said yes and they were trying to like get out of anything with Carlos but I can also see Carlos seeing him and Charles Leclerc getting treated so differently when he was the only one to win last season he had a great season for being treated you know like the second driver driver B whatever you want to say yeah he had a really good season he won and I feel like Ferrari must have really stiffed him with the contract for him not to sign it right away yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I think, you know, we, we have said that if Ferrari is going to move on from one of their drivers, it's going to be, you know, Carlos years yeah. ahead of Charles. Obviously, we were right. I also think that this is probably going to be a better move for Carlos's career and the longevity of it because you can, you know, keep, you know, running into a brick wall figuratively and also sometimes literally at Ferrari. <laughs> and that that would demoralize anyone. Like, you know, the the type of driver we saw out of Sebastian Vettel in his Red Bull days was not the same guy that we got after his Ferrari days when he moved over to Aston Martin. So it's... I'm really excited to see what, you know, Carlos has a lot of options um, and I'm really excited to see which one of those plays out and the merry-go-round of that is going to be silly season is going to be really interesting because I think that a lot of it is going to hinge on where Carlos goes. No, I completely agree. And it's like, which I'm also really excited about because 
I feel like this season of all seasons, Carlos is going to drive the crap out of that Ferrari. Oh, yeah. And I hope he beats Charles in every single race. And this is like his audition because I think it's really going to be offers coming to him and wherever he wants to go, he can go as long as he has a good season. But Carlos is a great driver. He could land anywhere, (laughs) but I think he'll probably land in a mid-tier team because he's not going to go to Red Bull. And he, I right. doubt he's going to go to Mercedes and take Lewis's seat. And then you have Ferrari. So he'll definitely end up in that mid-tier, which I think is fine. But he only really needs – I'm still not sold that the whole Audi thing is not happening. I think that he could land anywhere for a year maybe. Or he goes to stake – and fries whatever we're calling that team (laughs) for like a year and then he'll be with Audi well that would be like that would be Audi so yeah I so I I think that he has two options because I agree with you he's not going to Mercedes um I think that he so obviously Fernando Alonso is one of the major players who has been linked to Lewis's seat if that happens then Aston Martin could be a good landing spot for Carlos. But what I think is the most likely is that, that Carlos takes probably Zhou Guanyu's seat at stake and they build the Audi team around him in 2026 because Sauber boss, Audi boss is Andrea Seidel, who was team principal at McLaren when Carlos was driving at McLaren. And, uh, Science Senior has such ties to Audi. Correct. But I ugh, I'm, I have this gut feeling that Zhou Guan Yu is not going to lose his seat. I really don't. I think I think Botas is on his victory lap. Could be. Because Zhou Guan Yu is so good for F1. Yeah, he's just in and a it, terrible the, car. Right. And so if Audi comes in and actually like overhauls the car I think they'll have to keep show I don't know because I think that Audi is an is is really they're gonna want to find a German driver to drive in that car and unfortunately oh my gosh when you get German will we get Mick Schumacher (laughs) and Carlos Sainz oh my god that would be hilarious um could be an option um so I but I I really I think Zhou Guan Yu is unfortunately in a really crappy position where he's a really good driver on a really shitty team. Um, and we're, we're recording this the day that they have released the um, new livery and basically the, the, the new car for stake, um, which looks interesting. We'll talk about the changes when we do our, our livery roundup after everyone has, has been released. Um, but I just don't, you know, I think that he his career is going to be hindered by the fact that he has been at Alfa Romeo so long and has the you know they've under that he's really been you know hasn't been able to perform well because they haven't given him a car that can perform in any way. Right. But we have to remember this is F one, and money gets you a long ways. And Zhou Guan Yu, being the only driver from China brings a lot of money with him and a lot of that interest and a lot of support, especially if we finally get a race back in China. Fingers crossed for 2024. And he does well. And, and he, he does, does well, well at that race in China. And he does well. But it's, I mean, there's a lot of money there. And I think even though Audi, you know, is successful and they, and they have a lot of money backing the team, I think that sponsorship is still really important. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. And like, if you look at it and if it comes down to something like that, where neither person is performing well because the car sucks. Who's bringing in more money to the team, though? And I, I think you pick Zhou Guan Yu over Valtteri Bottas. Under those disagree, circumstances. Under those circumstances, definitely. I, I don't think... I love Valtteri Bottas. I think that, you know, his Everyone presence on the grid is, you know... It's our favorite thing. You know, he he's the most he's the Australian... He's the most Australian Finnish man the world has ever seen. And we love that. And, you know, he doesn't like wearing clothes and it's hilarious. Um, But I do think that we are getting towards the, you know, the tail end because I just don't know where he would go that isn't, you know, where he is now. 
unless he's going to go to Alpine, but something really weird would have to go to, you know, be happening at Alpine for, for that to happen. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. I love the conspiracy theories that I have been dreaming up in my head on like, what's going to happen in silly season. Did I think Mm -hmm. it would be starting in February? No. No. Thank you, Lewis. Um, But honestly, I think it's going to be so wild because so many seats are open that we can't even predict what's going to happen. Like, we may even get new drivers and people will lose their seats completely. Right. So, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. But I'm excited. I'm excited to see it all happen. Speaking of the merry-go-round... Who's going to take over Lewis's seat in 2025 at Mercedes? See, this is one that I, I, I don't know. I would have told you probably Lando, but Lando's already locked down for eternity with McLaren, basically. So he's out. Because they Be- knew that Lewis was yeah. talking to Ferrari. That yes. is, And so that was the key. Yes. As soon as I saw that and this, I'm like, oh, they knew. Yeah. So they knew and they yeah. also, you know, they also knew about um, Leclerc and wanting to protect Leclerc from any opening caused by Lewis. And that's why they locked him down until Kingdom Come. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't hate what you said earlier, Fernando Alonso. I would love, but here's the thing again, is Mercedes going to have a competitive car? Because I would love to see Fernando Alonso in a highly competitive car like, oh yeah at what 50 60 years old just like trying to beat these young kids yeah. I I want to see him win another race I want to see him on the podium more I don't think he's going to be able to do that with Aston Martin so I would love love to see him in a competitive Mercedes but you know I think oh again he's a very smart guy and he'll jump to the team that he knows can perform. I don't know if Mercedes does not have a successful year this year. I don't know if he'll make that jump. I agree, which is why there are some other interesting names that could um, come up. One of them, the the first one right, right off the bat was Alex Albon. And there have been a lot of rumors about Alex these yeah. last couple of days. Um, a lot of people saying he's a shoe in for the Mercedes seat. P- there, somebody out of nowhere said very reliably, and if you're listening to this on a podcast, I'm saying this in quotes, um, that he was offered a three-year contract with Red Bull, which is just not going to happen. Not true. Um, but then today, James Vowles confirmed that Albon will be driving for Williams in 2025. So the dura- so he is, he is not part of the 2024 silly season merry-go-round that we thought he was because... James Vows right. probably very quickly called him up and said, we need you to sign another contract for 2025 and get us to the end of the regulation. Oh, uh, good old James. Yeah. I just want to know if he was going to varsity or JV Red Bull. <laughs> it wasn't very clear. God, it's so yeah. dumb. We have two Red Bull teams now. But yeah. But then I mean, other the questions. Other person, oh, the who, other person, who's on your mind? Well, I want to see him back on the grid. I want to see Mick Schumacher. But now that we talk about it, I kind of like him with Audi and Carlos. I mean, yeah. that's probably never going to happen. But I I think he really kind of fell under the lots of pressure from the name and driving for Haas in years where the car was not good. Right. And just really struggled with that, struggled to gain confidence. I think time under Lewis and George – and working with Toto, I think that probably did him some good. And I would like to see him come back in 2025. I agree. I, I, and I, I do think that the way the trajectory of life is going is he will end up back on the F1 grid at some point. I just don't really know if that's what Toto Wolf wants his driver lineup to be, you know, Mick Schumacher and George Russell. It really depends on how um, how the season, you know, goes for George this year. But the other name that I've been hearing that I think is interesting is Esteban Ocon. No, there's no way. I'm going hard I mean, and fast. No. Well, I... It, I, it could be, you know, it, I don't hear, you know, as, as a very likely thing, but I do think that he might want to jump ship out of Alpine after the last couple of years he's had to endure with them. I think him and Pierre Gasly both want out of Alpine, but I think Alpine's going to be different. I feel like 
I hope they are. With the new ownership group coming in, I think it's going to be a big swing. And I don't know. I think I just I don't know why, but I love Alpine, the French team with two yeah. French drivers. Like it just I don't know why, but it just like means something more there than any other team, I feel like. Um but it's I like if know. you had I'd- an Italian driving at Red Bull. Oh my gosh, the Tifosi. Yeah. No, sorry, at Ferrari. If an Italian driver was driving Ferrari. for Ferrari. Yeah. I was like, Ferrari. wait a minute, I don't get the analogy. I was uh, like, wait, wait, wait. It, it, yes. It's like if you if like if you had a Ferrari driver or a, an Italian driver driving for Ferrari. <laughs> like an two plus Austria two equals care. sock. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. We got it. I'm tired. It out. It's been a You're long tired. few it's days. It's ten thirty here, girlfriend. No, I'm, just I'm old and haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> um, but yes, no, and yeah. yeah, and that's like if there were two British drivers for, you know, any of the British teams. Well, there we were had. two if, British drivers at Mercedes. <laughs> I know, I'm taking that back. If there were two American drivers for Haas, can you imagine? There'd be red, white, and blue flags and stars and stripes everywhere, and people would freak out. But, well, I, I have I have some thoughts on that, but we will talk about that in a few minutes. Um, the one last name that I want to bring up as somebody who has been referenced for the Mercedes seat that I do not think is going to happen, but I think we should mention is Kimi Antonelli. Um, re- he's a Mercedes junior um, who is like, I think like the second coming of Jesus Christ no. um, at this point. Um, <laughs> no. I don't think he, he's, he's going to be racing in F2 this year. Um, I think, you know, Toto clearly saw what happens when you put a rookie driver in, in, in your seat after what Haas did. Um, and I don't think Toto's going to do that. Um, Toto will put Antonelli at Williams before he, he would ever set foot, you know, in the Mercedes garage, um, as a driver, but that is a name that has been bandied about since, you know, Lewis decided to turn February 1st into the new April fools. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, he's probably a great driver, but I, like you said, there's no way Toto's going to put, you know, a brand new rookie in the Mercedes. He'll kick him over Mm. to Williams and see how how they do. But I think the formula for Mercedes, I think it's a driver with experience and then George, because George is locked in. Yeah. So, yeah. There needs to be a seasoned, experienced driver. I think Fernando Alonso makes a lot of sense. I don't know how that's going to work out personality-wise yeah. with like him and Toto, but I'm here for it. Oh, my it God. So the much. chaos. Oh, man. And I, the I, radio I, calls, can you imagine? Yeah, well, there and won't be like, any good ones because we can't swear on radio oh my anymore. God, yeah. Um, no, the the things that I, I, you know, that you know, the other people who've been throwing out, um, you know, Fernando's name for for Cedar, it, it basically have have said like, Fernando has never met a contract that he hasn't liked to burn. Um, and the man will happily burn every bridge he's ever crossed, which uh, reminds me of someone. But anyway, um, and, um. Like, he will just, he will move on to wherever, he, like, wherever, you know, life takes him, he will go and he will drive and things will happen. So I, I can, I, I can, I can see it happening and I can see it being absolutely crazy. Yeah. Only time will tell. <laughs> yeah. And who knows? I mean, we're, you know, three and a half weeks out of season. We might have the rest of silly season all locked up before we get to Bahrain. Probably if someone one. ruins I hope it- August for me, I'm going to scream because that is what I look forward to. I look forward to the summer break because I know we're getting a few weeks of chaos. And if anyone continues to ruin this for me, I will have words, strong words. It's all so I many with. words. All of the words. <laughs> Yeah, there. It's 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 going to be really interesting. These these next two weeks before we get to to preseason testing are going to be packed full of yes. new cars and hopefully just new cars because this has been so much happening and season hasn't even started yet. No, 
I can't so wait to get continue crazier. this conversation though, like throughout the season, because I know oh, that's yeah. going to be the conversation is Lewis is going to Ferrari, and like, what does this mean for next year? And I put it on the list of things that's going to happen every single weekend is talking about Lewis moving to Ferrari. Turn yeah, it into if, a if drinking want... game. That's our drinking game this year. Yes. How <laughs> many times will Crofty and Martin and everybody around the sport remind us that Lewis is moving to Ferrari next oh year? Oh my God. I don't look forward to it. Honestly, though, we so should many. keep track. We should do an over under. I don't oh know why, God. but I'm really so into many. sports betting right now, even though I don't bet on anything, but it seems enticing. And I'm not allowed to. Well, you're not allowed for NCAA sponsored sports. Motorsport is not included. I could I could sport bet in motorsport, but you know what? We're just doing it for fun. It's more fun to say that I'm not allowed to sports bet. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay. I think we can wrap up this contract chatter. I yes. think we, we can close this chapter and, and move on. We've talked a lot for about now. it, and I know we will continue to talk about it probably every week. But something else happened this week. And I know that Catherine and I both have a lot of thoughts and feels. I know we're both extremely disappointed. But when is what? Well, that's not news that the uh, you know F one FIA or just whatever whoever decide made this decision because there's so many acronyms. But just disappointing us again. Um, and yes. Jenny was rejected <laughs> for yeah. the eleventh spot on the grid. So that's cool. Yeah, and the 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 biggest problem that I have is that the reasons that they used were really freaking stupid. Um, yep. So to clarify, Formula One management, um, separate from the FIA, as you as you have as we have discussed since this has really all started, you know, coming together, has has announced that they have decided to pass on an eleventh team joining the grid for a bunch of really stupid reasons. Um, and this came on the tails of Andretti kind of putting it out there to media that they were aiming for a 2025, 2026 entrance to the grid. That was of course later clarified to be a 2026 entrance because they knew that it was not reasonable to come in on the last year of a regulation in 25 to attempt to be competitive in any way. Like they, they, they understood that. Yeah. Um, and before anyone says like, oh, it's over, Andretti is done. No, it's not. The door is open for a 2028 entry. Um, and this is where the the reason the the one legitimate reasoning comes in is Andretti was planning on coming onto the grid with a Renault engine. But as we have seen from Alpine the last couple of years, and as we have seen from, you know, Red Bull in the first season of Drive to Survive, Renault is not the engine to, du jour anymore. Um, and, you know, if if the FOM wants an, another team to come onto the grid, they want that team to be competitive. Totally fair. Um, and they, they knew that they wouldn't be competitive with the Renault engine. Which is fair. Yeah. I can't argue with that one. I can so. argue with the other ones. Um, yeah, the other ones are dumb. Yeah. So so the door is open for an entry in 2028 with a, um, you know, power unit engine, all that fun stuff so, um, supplied by GM, General Motors. Um, and 2028 is actually, you know, timing wise is, is really important um, because by the time we get to 2028, which feels like a million years from now, the um, Formula One organizational Concord agreement will have changed. And one of the things that will change in that agreement is the current dilution fee. So the dilution fee is the fee that a new team would have to pay to that would be put in a pool to be split by the other teams to offset the prize pool from the FIA being, you know, cut down by the fact that there's a new entrant on the grid. Currently that dilution fee is $200 million based on the current valuation of formula one and its growth and relevance. It should probably be in the realm of about 800 million to a billion dollars. And that, you know, the dilution fee will be, that increased rate in 2028. So Andretti would have to pay that higher amount, which would make the team's bitch slightly less about having an 11 team, which I personally feel is inevitable. Yeah, I think it's, 
I mean, what, we used to have 12 teams, now we have 10. Yeah. I think adding an 11th would probably also open the door for us going back to 12 teams. Um, I think, And I think 12 is a fine number. I don't I have do it. Like, I think I think 12 is the, the perfect number to have. I agree. I agree. I think, I don't know. I mean, part of me thinks that this all of these dumb reasons were to get them into the next agreement so it would increase um yeah i think 200 million is really low but i don't i agree I mean, 800 million is insane but 200 million is also insanely low um i just i don't know i feel like something's off and sketchy about them because it was a com- besides Renault, the Renault engine, like it was a very competitive package that they were putting forth. I mean, it was, we've seen this rise in popularity in the US and Americans love to like, you know, throw money at sports because that we're Americans. Yeah. And look, we're, we're growing. We have three races, Chicago, potentially a fourth or offset third, whatever. The popularity and the want of F1 in the U.S. is there. And Andretti, it'd be an American team. You know, Haas is Haas, but now it's not because we loved it for Gunther. And now that's, that he's gone. That's something that I really want to emphasize yeah. is – after so after the news broke about Andretti, um, Sky Sports put out you know some some comments and and you know Martin Brundle addressed a lot of things. One of the things that he said was that um, obviously the situation that we're in now with trying to add another team is very different than it was in 2015 when you know Gunther Steiner and Gene Haas were working on um, bringing Haas to the grid. At the end, it is undoubtable that Haas has made an impact on the impact of Formula One in the United States. But to say that it was just Haas when it was Gunther Steiner and Drive to Survive's influence is not exactly accurate. And, you know, we, we talked about um, in, in our episode, you know, talking about, you know, Gunther leaving Haas, you know, what does that mean for people who were interested in the Haas team who were mostly in it for Gunther and not for Kevin Magnuson, Nico Hulkenberg, or even Haas as a brand? Um, because, you know, really what Haas has done to influence Formula One as a motorsport entity has been with a number of significant embarrassments, including the Mazepin, Mural Kali nonsense. Um, So to say that Andretti would benefit more from Formula One than Formula One would benefit from the addition of Andretti is the stupidest excuse to say, no, we don't want another team on the grid. Right up there with there's not enough room if you have 11 garages, because obviously if Formula One is willing to set aside garage space for Brad Pitt in in, in an Apple TV Plus movie, then there's definitely room for that to be an actual team. Agreed. I, yeah. This is so frustrating. Maybe they're just trying to keep the Americans out of F1. I mean, you you can't say that you're 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 trying to do you know you know all this great you know investment in Formula One in the United States and not put money where your mouth is you know and at this point Williams is doing more to grow investment um, in the United States between a today they they launched their car in New York City b yeah. their driver is Logan Sargent and c they brought on American driver Leah Block to represent Williams. Um, in the F1 Academy series, which we will do an F1 Academy update because there are lots of things that we have to talk about. Look forward to that at some point in the not too distant future. Um, sooner, just if there's not no, more seats, news. seats and we have to keep, you know, focusing on that. Yeah, Again, exactly. Wait until August, please. <laughs> My anxiety can't take it. Yeah. So one, one other point that this is something that my dad brought up is – Formula One doesn't want another brawn that doesn't right. meet the same ex, you know, meet the same shock result that Braun did, which is understandable, but also kind of like Braun was a like 
a once in a lifetime type of situation, um, which we go into in our Braun documentary um, review. But, you know, obviously we're not expecting Andretti to come in and come on the grid and, you know, be competing with Red Bull and, and McLaren. We're not, we're not saying that, but that doesn't mean that it would detract from formula one to have, you know, you know, a, another, you know, midfield team on the grid. I mean, look at what they're saying at Haas, our current American team who have come out and said that at Bahrain, they're going to be P19 and 20. They, they know that that, that that's happening. So, yeah. so to say that, that Andretti would get out, you know, get more out of this than formula one is just bananas to me. Yeah. I, uh, I don't like yeah. this decision. I thought for sure everything would be okay. But honestly, if they would have come out and said that they were using a different, like, power unit engine package and not using Renault, I still think they would get denied. Yeah, they're, they're, they're still, you know, being babies about it. Um, yeah. Which, you know, I understand you don't want to lose the amount of prize money, but I think that year over year, you're still going to be bringing in way more money, especially when you have an American team that's going to have at least one American driver who is going to be as good as the current cop of drivers on the grid. Yeah. And like, I know Haas is an American team, but Haas is really big in like other areas of motorsport that aren't necessarily yeah. those fans are not your typical F1 fans. I mean, it's all motorsport, right? cars yada yada uh, but i watched the clash in the coliseum two nights ago and i can tell you that all motorsport is not the same no no i'm not that's not like cars general room car go fast yes. room car go fast yes um but i don't think it's that team again like we were saying we're necessarily being pulled because of Haas, whereas andretti's like a very big name people know and you know, I don't know. It's just, I don't understand it. I want to keep, I want to keep following and watching this though. Cause I feel like it will develop and it'll become a bigger deal. And I think. Andretti's not going to take this lying down. No, absolutely not. And I think if they can do like a full blown American team, bring GM in, I think that would be a very, even more compelling, but who knows? I'm not the FOM. So. Yeah, because the other – well, I don't know what, you know, what information the FOM is going off of because clearly that's just – but anyway, the, the other issue is America's team is not really trying to invest in – America's team, um, which right. is something that we we talked about pretty extensively when when um, Gunther got um, replaced by Ayo Komatsu uh, at Haas, but I, I really – I don't think that Andretti buying Haas to, you know, back back their way onto the grid is on the table. I don't think it's off the table, but I don't think it's the priority at the moment. Yeah. It might change. We'll have to keep watching it, see what happens. Yeah. But But you know what has yeah. changed? Oh, uh, no, we're not I I vowed I would never talk about this again. We're going to talk about this. Oh, don't make me do it. Well, we're not going to be happy about it, but we're going to talk about it. Um, and that is, of course, our least favorite thing of all time, the sprint format. The update oh, for 2024 God. has been released. It's and so dumb. It's so I'm not dumb. confident. No. I'm confident that we're going to get some terrible sprint races. That's what well, I'm I think we're going to get some terrible Grand Prix races. Um, so as as has been reported, the new sprint format for 2024 that we will have to endure six times this year um, is on Friday. We will have free practice one followed by sprint qualifying, which was originally on Saturday morning. That was originally, you know, the first thing of the day. Then Saturday, we will start with the sprint, though, which means that I will have to start waking up at like two, three, four o'clock in the morning to watch these goddamn sprint races. Um, Emily, that's on you. Um, so Saturday, only we for will half start the with year. That is true. Because remember, I'm coming back to the U.S. <laughs> and then we're both going to have to suffer. Um, so Saturday, early, bright and early in the United States will be sprint format, followed by regular qualifying. And then Sunday will be the race. This is so the, dumb. 
the what what jumps out the most to me is what happens if you crash in the sprint. Yes. Yes. What happens if you crash? You can't qualify. You can't race. So Well, I mean, you'll be you able to gonna... race, but you're going to be racing from the back. Do we really think people are going to go all out in the sprint for no. one point just to like maybe miss qualifying and maybe ruin your entire Grand Prix weekend? Absolutely not. This is so no. dumb. This is almost yeah. worse than last year. I, I I don't disagree. And the other thing that they didn't actually fix is one of the reasons why the sprint format in 2022 was okay was the sprint results set the grid for Sunday's race. If you're still so you separating free sprint practice. qualifying and qualifying qualifying, then there's still no point in having the sprint because it's still not going to make a meaningful impact on the the race itself. Um, no. And the race itself matters more. Um, so it's, it's still going to suck and we're still going to complain about how much we don't like it. Because here's the thing too. The... the- Oh, I just hate everything about sprint weekends, especially like performing and everything. It's like you get one free practice, and then your car's set. What ha- and then everyone's gonna what get damaged and ha- something happens in the sprint, and then they have to go to qualifying, and they'll probably how many you know penalties is Acon gonna get this year? Um, for at least this, forty that, places the other. for one race. God, I hope so. But no, like the penalties and everything for having to fix the car on sprint weekends is so stupid i hate it i hate sprints just get rid of them we don't need them yeah They're not i haven't wanted. seen anything yet about park Ferme changes it, well speaking of, of of we don't want it if you're focusing your your efforts on growing formula one in the united states the sprint races are going to happen in the middle of the night when most americans are sleeping it's because it, the sprint races are going to be at the same time at FP2. I don't watch FP2 for most races because I sleep through FP2 at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I like yeah, sleep. It's it's so dumb. It's it's going to make like it this. worse and it's going to make me more sleep deprived because I will watch the for you, thing, our though, listeners. Like this sprint format sucks. Everyone yes. knows it. I feel like we're just throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks and like we'll just keep trying the next option it'll probably change again next year and yep. the next year until someone finally gets it right what what is the best way to solve this problem besides getting rid of sprint weekends i don't know because i think the whole thing is done i think you have to go back to the sprint sets the grid for qualifying i think that's the Agreed. only way to do it and until they go back to that i think it's just going to be one circus weekend after another Everyone's going to hate it. The drivers are going to complain. We're going to hear about it from Max until the cows come home. And I just don't like it. So we either need to get rid of it or go back to the 2022 format because I can't stand. The 2022 format wasn't perfect, but it's better than what we've been enduring this last year and what we'll probably have to endure this year. I'm not looking forward to the first sprint race. I'm not looking forward to the fact that one of the American races is a sprint race this year. I, I I, it's, it's, I don't like it. And you all know that we don't like it. And hopefully there will continue to make tweaks to it to make it at least somewhat entertaining slash relevant to the championship series and everything. I don't know. Because wasn't an idea like a reverse grid or that there's a yeah. separate championship for sprint races if we have enough sprint races or something like that? Like, I feel well, like I don't want to be at the out... point where we have enough sprint races. Well, that would be too many sprint races. God, no. But I know there, like, there's so many just, like, wild, crazy ideas being thrown out there. I feel like, you know, the people in charge might want to field some some uh, crazy ideas from the public because I'm sure something is being said that's better than what we're currently doing. So, I don't know. Yeah, if you're going to make me sit through a sprint series, then let's make it, like, a spec. Let's give everyone the same damn car and then really see what that's going to be like. I know that would cause like to- like so many other issues and considerations, but like let's mass make this chaos. more fun. <laughs> yeah. I give give me mass chaos. Don't give me this nonsense. Um, but anyway, Emily, what are your your final thoughts on fr- you know Ferrari, Lewis, <sighs> Andretti, the sprint? 
if you have any. We've talked through a lot in the last Do hour. Do I have any thoughts, Catherine? One, so many. I'm very excited for Silly Season. If this is a preview of what we're going to get, I'm excited as long as everyone contains it in the two to three weeks in August so that my anxiety <laughs> can just like bubble over only for those three weeks. That'd be great. Two, I'm really interested to see how this affects the 2024 season because, I mean, everyone is driving for their <laughs> driving to survive to keep their seat because we have so many contracts coming up with, you know, Lando and LeClaire signing big contracts to stay. Carlos knowing he's losing his seat. Lewis knowing he's moving. Like all of this, I feel like is going to really weigh heavily like a big storm cloud. Like we saw in Brazil last year um, <laughs> over the entire grid. And I think it's really going to affect how people drive. Um, yeah. So this is kind of getting me excited for the season. The Andretti thing, I'm pissed off and annoyed. Sprint weekends, I'm even more pissed off and annoyed. But, you know, that's nothing new. But I really yeah. think that all of this preseason movement so close to the season starting is just going to really affect the driving of this season for seats next season. Agreed. And especially because, you know, coming into the season, we all fully expected that the biggest question of the year, which is still a big question, but I don't know if it's the biggest at this point, is what is going to happen between Checo Perez and Daniel yes. Ricciardo. Yes. Like that's, that's like what I was that set was on supposed this whole to be season. the thing. That was going, that's our Roman Empire right there, right? Like that was supposed to be the big thing of the season. And now it's, you know, Mass one of chaos. many oh my goodness but what about you Catherine? Yes. anything else you want to add um I'm really excited um I have so many thoughts um so many thoughts on the the liveries that we have seen these last few days the liveries we're going to see um we will do a livery update um once they are all out as we said at the top of the show um but i i really think that this is going to be a big big season for formula one um and is is going to be one of those like you're gonna look back at the 2024 season and you know like that's going to be the season that started a lot of the things that we're going to be seeing, you know, into the future. Yeah. Going off track here a little bit. Mm -hmm. I want to know what season of drive to survive this whole Lewis hoopla is going to be in. I know that the show comes out in a month. However, you can edit things really quickly. It's coming in like two and a half weeks. <sighs> February is such a short month. Um, I know. <laughs> but like, I want to know if it's going to be in this season or if it's going to start next season. Oh, it's going to be next season. season. It's going to start next season. I just want to know the dirty details of what happened. You know me. I mean, we're going to be lucky if we get, like, the Gunther coverage into this season of Drive to Survive. No, I think we'll get the Gunther, the Gunther coverage. Yes. I don't know. And we will we'll talk see. about our top moments that of 2023 that we expect to see in, in uh, the upcoming season of Drive to Survive next week. Gosh, we hope. Uh, but before we go, it is time for my F1 fun fact. Catherine's so, F1 fun fact. Catherine's F1 fun fact. Yay. So this week, the F1 fun fact is during his 12-year career in Formula One, which included nine podium finishes, Martin Brundle, our fan favorite of the gridwalk, Never let a lap in a Formula One race. Whoa. Yeah. Never? Really? Never. Never. 12 years, huh. nine podiums, none laps led. Huh. Yeah. That is a fun fact. Yeah. I think one I'm going to really look forward to these F1 fun facts because I think you're going to do a good job I'm going to have to stop putting like them in, in the rundown. So I'm like really so surprising know. you. Yeah. 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 We can do that. Oh, well, another great, uh, you know, off-season week. From the mm -hmm. Anyways, like Catherine said, we will have our top moments of 2023 and moments we hope to see in the Drive to Survive series coming out later in February. Next week, unless, you know, another bomb goes off and then we'll just have to figure out where we are from there. But that has been the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>